here in our Tiger exhibition area at the Tank Museum at Bovington and it's not complete yet. We're getting the area ready and one of the things as part of that preparation process we're going to be repainting a couple of the tanks. Now museums all around the world have that problem with big objects like aeroplanes, vehicles, trucks, tanks. What do you present it as and at what point in its history do you try and tell the story of that vehicle? Because quite often something as big and as long serving as a tank or an aeroplane could have a number of iterations, a number of different paint schemes in its life. And for a museum, quite often you're trying to use that item to tell a story. So you want a paint scheme that will fit with the story you're telling. Now, quite some years ago, the two versions of the Tiger behind me were repainted in what we now call very erroneous or wrong colour schemes. Now there's a number of reasons for that. The amount of information available back then is very different because of the amount of research and information that therefore is available to us now. We can do a much more accurate representation of what a tank looked like back in 1944, 1945 in Germany. And we've got the evidence, we've got things like paint scrapes and we've got a much more overall picture and a history of the individual vehicles that we can now rely on to repl replicate and put back on these particular vehicles. And in this case, we're taking away the schemes that are erroneous and we've decided we're going to put the vehicles back as they were when they were captured. If we're going to talk about the paint schemes on German tanks, we've got to talk about the RAL scheme. Um, RAL stands for, as you can see across the bottom here, it's actually a German standards agency set up in 1927. And the whole idea of RAL is so that, again, a bit like a kite mark or a British standard, every country tends to have their own, but it's so that certain colours meet a specification. And RAL, in 1927, when they first set up the paint schemes, three-digit code, and those three-digit codes are actually under whatever organisation they're set up for. So you could get the same three-digit code for the post office as you could for the German army. So that for us was confusing. But in 1941, they combine the schemes together, they do a four-digit code, and those paints are then unique um, to not just one service, but across the spectrum. Now, the German military before the Second World War use two colours on most of their vehicles. They take that down to one colour. And I'm going to refer to my notes here because I want to give you the actual right RAL numbers. Um, because again, obviously, if the Germans thought this was important, and RAL is a system that's very well looked into. For example, all the pigments that go into a RAL paint have to be found within the German Reich. And not only that, they are base oxides. In other words, they can't fade any further. They're not going to disintegrate or fade in sunlight. They are at their lowest possible level. So again, getting those colours right was important for the Germans, so important for us to actually follow up on that. So again, just before the Second World War, the Germans are using a camouflage scheme on all of their vehicles. Um, that is RAL 7017 and 7021. But in 1940, to simplify the matter, they actually only go over to painting everything in 7021, which is that famous grey colour that we're so used to seeing on German vehicles early in the war. Now, for North Africa, and again, don't forget our Tiger 1, Tiger 131, was sent out to North Africa. The Germans actually have a look at um, what the situation is out in the desert, and they realise if they paint vehicles the same colour as the surrounding landscape, it doesn't actually really work. You have to paint a vehicle slightly darker than the surrounding landscape because in that way, reflected life, etc., they realise that actually dark is the best way to go. Paint them the same colour, the vehicles look too light for various reasons. So for North Africa, um, in March of 1941, they come up with a scheme where two-thirds of the vehicle should be painted in RAL 8000 and one-third painted in RAL 7008, so 7008. A year later, in March 42, they changed that. 
and they actually come up with a scheme that again it's a two-tone camouflage scheme but they use RAL 8020 and RAL 7027. Now our Tiger because of when it's made, you would have thought would have had that later scheme on. In actual fact, Tiger 1, when paint scrapes were done, various areas were looked at, it had got the earlier scheme. So whether they were still using up paint from the earlier scheme or whether the order hadn't quite reached them, we're not too sure. But actually, they're using a paint scheme that was first instituted a whole year earlier. Um, numbers on the side, by the way. Well, flat red RAL 3000 on Tiger 131. So we looked at the photographs uh, when the good quality prints of when the Tiger was captured and we made sure that we tried to copy the outlines where if you study really good quality prints you can see the difference between those two tones on Tiger 131. So we've used that on Tiger 131. Now, the other tigers that we've got in the display, looking at those ones, we, we've said already, we painted them in erroneous colours, looking at books and various other things later. Now, the records show a very different story to how we painted them. What happens from 43 onwards, Dunkel Gelb, which is this sandy looking colour that we're all so sort of familiar with, but never quite pinning it down, um, which is RAL 7028, that colour was put on the vehicles as a base coat um, before they were issued to the troops and the troops themselves would then apply a camouflage scheme on top of that and the very sensible reason for that is it depends on the landscape you're fighting in um, you know and how much you feel as crews or your commanding officer thinks that camouflage needs to be applied in these particular circumstances we're fighting in so for example um, when you look at our King Tiger, it leaves the factory in Dunkel Gelb, but then it's issued with two-tone colour scheme, uh, and those paints that are issued are RAL 6003 and RAL 8017, and they're applied by the troops in the field. Now, if you look at our King Tiger that was captured in Normandy, that particular paint scheme, we've left it on there. It's not a bad match. It was done when the tank was at Shrivenham. And again, they repaired or they replicated some of the Zimmerit that was on the tanks that was being applied in the factories, the paint Dunkel Gelb over the top, and then the camouflage on top of that. They stopped, don't forget, they stopped applying Zimmerit in September of 44 because they realised, well, number one, it's taking up too much time. And there's some issues in the background. Are they actually causing more fires and uh, really they're doing anything in the way of protection? So that's why our... King Tiger, the production King Tiger is in that colour scheme, but we've left the Yag Tiger and the pre-production Tiger in the simple RAL coating because we know that was applied at the factories, markings were applied to the tanks, but no camouflage schemes were applied as these two tanks were being used for testing and are captured at Halstenbeck at the end of the war. That's why we've left them in their scheme because basically they never had a camouflage scheme applied to them. Now, the story behind RAL 7028, what happens in 1941, the, the Germans issue little cards with enamel colour chips on, and some of these cards have been found. Back in 2001, when we were trying to work out what Tiger 131, what the original scheme was that, we were talking to Hilary Doyle and Tom Yentz. They got some of those paint chips that we could look at, but at that time, no one had found a paint chip for 7028. And yet this was, in a way, the most common colour that was being used by the military after a certain date. So when we looked in our collection here, one of the things we came up with and found was this optics box. And if you look at the box, it's had a bit of a life. It's a bit rusty on the outside. Um, there's scratch marks on it. But when you open it inside, we've basically got a perfect paint match of RAL 7028 Dunkel Gelb. So a spectrometer was used, the paint match was taken from that, and not only we have used it, but we've passed it on to quite a number of other museums, and they've used it um, because Dunkel Gelb is being used in huge numbers of vehicles, um, rockets, uh, V2s were painted in this at some times. So we've ended up passing that colour match on to quite a number of others. Um, I know a number of you out there, model makers, there's very good matches now in all the, ma uh, the model schemes. Um, RAL Classic is pretty close to the original wartime colours, so, so you can actually um, get colour swatches with RAL Classic on. 
I don't think, unfortunately, Dunkel Gelb 7028 is part of that Rail Classic. So it's another one where you do have to either mix up or buy from a good reputable source. But that's part of that story behind the paint that goes onto the Tigers. And as we said earlier on, we can now be fairly sure, much more accurate compared to what we were earlier on.